In today's video, what I want to talk to you about is our journey, what, what we've done so far. If you're brand new to this channel, then I encourage you to go back and check out some of the very early videos where we're actually building our first uh, Mars habitat here at my wife and I's ranch. Uh, it had solar power, anaerobic digestion, uh, rainbow trout, uh, what else, wind, uh, sensors. Uh, we grew hydroponically using flood and drain. We did microgreens, did a whole bunch of different things where we were trying to figure out the, what I call the energy balance equation of indoor farming for everyday folks, not just big factories that sell really expensive produce, but actually making indoor uh, farming, growing your own food, uh, accessible to everybody. And when I started that journey, I was, well, I'm an aerospace engineer and uh, my neighbor at the time, Wrangler Starr, he had come over and the movie, The Martian had just come out. And in that movie, of course, Matt Damon does a great job playing Mark Watney, who gets stuck on Mars on Habitat and he has to grow his own food and do all those things on Mars. And while that wasn't the inspiration for what we were doing, when Cody had come over and he had seen what we had built, he's like, man, you're like the real Martian and it's stuck. So ever since then, this channel has been about people who, you know, want to follow me, you know, building these different systems, the solar panels, the wind, anaerobic digestion, the different pumps, the heating, the cooling, the Arduinos that we started off with, the computer systems, the servers, all that stuff people were following along. And of course we've done, you know, normal ranching videos about how to take care of your animals and building vineyards and building orchards and the yard and taking care of your, um, your garage and everything. Um, but uh, since I left my full-time job, you know, almost five years ago, four going on five years ago, uh, we've been working solely uh, trying to take those ideas that you saw on The Real Martian and translate them into real solutions that everyday people can have and use in their homes. And I think it's coming at a perfect time. Uh, we saw this issue a long time ago. You do the math and you're like, wow, you know, the world needs some more food. It's going to have a lot more people in it. So. Uh, my business partner and I, Bart, we started working together and taking what I had done here on The Real Martian and what he had done in Houston and started building on it. What we've come up with now is what you're seeing go live uh, to market. We're very excited about it. The, the grow towers are what we're talking about and the control system that goes with them. One of the biggest things that we hear all the time is your towers cost a lot. You know, why is that? And how do you expect to be successful with towers that cost so much? And they do cost a lot right now. They're really high quality. In fact, I was talking to my wife about uh, you know, the old paradigm, better, faster, cheaper. You know, it was a NASAism that completely and utterly failed. You know, if you want something better and faster, it's never going to be cheaper. If you want something cheaper and faster, it's never going to be good quality. We're following that same, I call it a law almost, uh, is that we've done something that's taken time. We try to build a quality thing. That means money, right? It's going to cost something. So what we're trying to do right now is what's called a regulated crowd fund so that we can go back into our design, yank out all the costs we possibly can, maybe redesign it so it's even less uh, costly to build. And then also start working with suppliers using, you know, buying power. If I can get buying power through this crowd fund, then I can actually buy, you know, instead of a few sheets of metal, I can buy tons of metal at a time and then I can pass those savings on to the customers. So our goal isn't to keep the towers at their current price. Our goal is to get the tower prices down. And the way that we're gonna do that is through design and supply chain management. You might be coming to this channel because you're really into space and the real Martian intrigues you and what we're doing uh, at Eden is something that you're excited about. You might be into natural growing methods or uh, food sustainability or food independence. And you're here because what we're doing will allow you to accomplish those things. You might be here because you wanna grow your own medicine such as cannabis. And you see that our towers are a great way that everyday folks can have professional grade growing capabilities in their homes at what we'll call the prosumer cost point. You might be into things like decentralized finance and that's what brought you here. And, and you know, you see that our solution is a decentralized solution. So instead of large monolithic farms, you see that we're trying to decentralize everything and put the power of food back into the people's hands. You might be here because you're checking out the newest innovations in ag tech and you see that, you know, while you have all these other large indoor farms that are failing around us, Eden's done something different. You want to check us out. And finally, you might be here because you discovered you really like to invest on things that make a moral difference to make a world a better place but also that impacts the bottom line and it's going to give you a return on your investment in a timely manner and eating caught your eye. 
Well, in the next series of videos, I'm gonna talk through all these different things, but today we're gonna to focus on space because that kind of started all this. It didn't really start all of it, but it kind of started it. So let me walk you through the story. For those that have been following along in The Real Martian, you know that my journey started with my dad. She's over 15 years ago now. Um, anyway, I had left the military. I heard God calling me home and I got home and my dad was diagnosed with terminal cancer. And you know, he had worked his whole life uh, to save up everything to, to retire. And six months before he was to retire, he was diagnosed with terminal cancer. That taught me a huge lesson and said, you know, if you're going to do something, if you're going to make a difference, you really need to get out there and go. There's no waiting. There's no perfect time at any moment. Life can change. So that was a huge lesson that he had taught me there in his, in his death. And before that, though, I'd always been into space. I'd always been into technology. I was trying to be an astronaut in the Air Force and I was going on the right path there. And I heard God call me home and it's like, got to go. Um, so I come back home and then he passes away and I'm thinking about the time in the woods with him and on the farm with my mom and her family and, you know, just kind of being the outdoors guy. And I always had this problem because the technology side of me, I'm an aerospace engineer. And I was like, how can I use the skills that I have, but go for a passion that I really care about, you know? And I imagine there's a lot of people at NASA that feel the same way. You know, we, we work with robots, you work with airplanes, you work with space shuttles, you work with spacecraft. And, you know, that's really cool. But I really want to help people right now today on Earth. And how can I use these skills that I've been blessed with to be able to do that? And so through a lot of thinking and, and being inspired by my dad, he always talked about sustainable living, living off grid. Uh, we came up with the initial designs of the HAB. And that really is how we started it. But in doing the have, one of the things that I was very much cognizant of when I started is let's design it for Mars, right? Let's, let's, I, I can't make it airtight. I don't have enough money for that. That's not what I'm talking about. But let's, let's try to design a system that would allow you to survive off of it if you were on Mars. And let's look at oxygen generation. Let's look at CO2 capture. Let's look at sun you know, as a power source. Let's look at wind. Let's look at all these different things. And that's really, really interesting and all. And it helped me design the have. So that's what got us going. And of course, that got us attention. Then I was able to leave my full-time job with a Boeing subsidiary. And now I'm doing this full-time. And when I first left, I spent six months doing a redesign of the hab itself and going through and taking all the lessons learned and putting them into this new design called hab2. And we actually got it all done. And, you know, the biggest thing, it's all about thermal dynamics. I mean, it's all about heat transfer. You know, anyone who's in engineering or anyone who's ever built anything, you want to, insulation is key. And managing heat and manage, and heat is both warm and cold, but managing it is super important. And we had it all dialed in. The energy equation was balanced and we went to go get it built. And they're like, oh, hey, you know, even though you're living on your savings, it'll take us like six months, you know, to get all the permits for all this. And I was like, what? We don't have six months to get them. You know, we need to do something different. So we actually had a plan from what Bart, when he started, he, he was doing something very similar, but in what we call the life pod, which is a Connex, a shipping container that has a lot of this similar things into it. The plan that we had is to build the hab first and then to go mobile with the life pod. But because of the permits, we went with the life pod. So anyone who can follow along in the real channel, you can go down and check out on the playlist. We have one dedicated to both the Hab and the LifePod, and you can actually see us working on it, building it, uh, making it all happen. And you know we were really getting going with it, and then COVID hit, right? And I mean, what do you do? The a global pandemic, first one since what 1913, right? The Spanish flu, and here we are, and our investment dried up. We're already living on savings. What do we do? And so what we did is we pivoted to these grow towers and grow walls and the software application that controls them, which were already in the life pod and already in the habitat design. And we took those out and we decided, hey, you know, let's go build these. And then certainly I got a bunch of videos on that. The grow tower playlist is down below as well. And you can check out, you know, how that all went and where we started at with it. Today, you know, so far I've told you the history of where we've come from, you know, and everything that got us to this point. But what I wanted to focus on is the type of people who come here who want to invest in space, right? Space exploration, the final frontier. Hi, I'm a Trekkie. Um, I do think that the economics of Star Wars works better than the economics of Star Trek but debatable. 
anyway, uh, I definitely have been inspired by sci-fi my entire life. And I believe, and uh, part of me still does, that if humanity could just see ourselves from a different perspective, that everything that God intended would actually start happening. We'd, we'd all realize, hey, we're kind of messing this thing up. We've really made a mistake here. We need to do something differently. And we're all the same. Um, I know in today's world that might seem a little naive, but part of me still hangs on to hope that that is the truth, that if enough of us would change, that the world would be better. But I digress a little bit there. What I wanted to talk about is those that want to go out into space and you're looking for technologies. Maybe you're looking for that triple bottom line, you know, impact investing plus space. But if you're here and you're looking at Eden, here's why Eden is good for a space investment. First of all, we're an official NASA spinoff company. So when I was designing everything, I was actually working with Dr. Raymond Wheeler uh, down at Kennedy Space Center, and he was giving me some information, read a lot of his papers. Uh, they're all in my research library, and his aeroponic work, hydroponic work, all of it was the genesis of what we now do in our towers. We use the aeroponic technology that NASA originally developed. Aeroponics is really cool because it grows 15% faster and it produces 15% larger yields once you get everything all dialed in. And the learning curve, you know, that's huge. Trying to grow food is a big deal if you wanna do it consistently. And if you're an astronaut and you're going from here to Mars, probably the last thing you really wanna focus on or worry about, I should say, is where's your food coming from, right? So we don't wanna have systems that are going to Mars that are really, really complex. And of course, the first systems that go to Mars and the first people to go to Mars are gonna come with a lot of goodies, right? They're not gonna depend on any system, at least I wouldn't. Um, they're gonna have a lot of food there. But what we wanna do is be able to long-term we need to start growing our own food in space, in low Earth orbit, on the moon, Mars, beyond. And the way that we're going to do that is through non-dirt-based systems, because carrying a lot of dirt into orbit is really, really expensive. So with aeroponics, you're literally carrying air, <laughs> which is a lot, lot less uh, expensive. Uh, a little bit of a jest there. Certainly, you got to carry your equipment up, but you're not carrying all that dirt, which is super heavy. Uh, so what you do need to have are nutrients and with our solution with uh, aeroponics, you know, you can generate your own nutrients through human waste leftover, depending on what the inputs are. This is all things that NASA is working on and all of us that want to go into space, we're all considering how do you recycle, right? How, how do you take, there is no waste in space. You, you got to catch it all and you got to recycle it if you really want to be efficient. So our part of the space travel journey is the food side and the technology that we have both aquaponic and aeroponic is certainly viable for long-term space there's a good set of reasons why you would want to invest in us nasa spin-off company using their technology we've taken their technology we've brought it here on earth and are making it available to everybody so we get to develop the technology you know when i was in the dod i was doing dod acquisition which means i helped on you know multi-billion i think my program was 250 billion dollars the top secret satellite program super cool um, don't know the status of it anymore, so don't ask. Uh, but anyway, you know, those programs, they take forever to get everything figured out, and it's really expensive. Whereas what we're doing, you know, being able to take our towers and being able to put them here on Earth and figure out all the problems here, right now, just by taking NASA technology, getting it out to people, letting them use it, taking all those lessons learned, making the technology better, well, that's a win win win. That's that's a win for us. That's a win for NASA. That's a win for the people here on Earth. So um, there's another good reason for you to invest if you're interested in space. Uh, next reason is that we are working with Space Force. Uh, we're working with the Air Force as well. We've already won a phase one SBIR and uh, phase two has been awarded, uh, not yet funded, but we're working on that. And uh, to be able to support, you know, very remote locations uh, for Space Force, you know, you got different parts of the planet that you need to go to to uh, monitor the launch systems, to monitor the satellite systems. And some of those are very dependent on a logistical supply chain that's very fragile. And our solutions, uh, not just for Space Force, but for anywhere here on the planet, can allow you to start breaking free from that logistical tail. Uh, that is required to get you your food. So that's just a few of the reasons why, uh, if you're interested in space, that you would want to invest in Eden. Right now, what we're trying to do is get everybody to head over to edengrowsystems.com forward slash reg CF. That's Romeo Echo Golf Charlie Foxtrot. What that is, is it's a place where you could pledge your support 
uh, for this current crowdfund. And if you're unable to pledge, but you really like what we're doing, you see that there's a potential path to make this technology and this company that we've built a lot better and that can really help humanity, but you can't afford to pledge, no problem, totally get it, it's tough times right now. What we could use are your prayers and you sharing these videos. Two of those things, one of those things, both of them are super helpful. Um, but we're here doing what we think God told us to do, or like I like to joke, you know, from the Blues Brothers, we're on a mission from God. They're not going to catch us. We're on a mission from God. Right. So for you, if you can't afford to pledge, no, no worries there. Just pray for us. Uh, pray for funding. Pray for the right investors to come along, the right people to connect us. Pray for an army to be developed of people who will help share this message and get it out there because we need help. Uh, in a sense, we're like David versus Goliath. A lot of people want to control your food, but we're trying to set you free so that you can grow your own food, even if you live in downtown, wherever, uh, and don't have access to any dirt. It's a little challenging for us to get out there right now. So we could use your prayers. We could use you, your help sharing, not just liking. The thumbs up thing is always good, but we really could use your help in actually hitting the share button and sending that out so that uh, your friends and your family you know, can see what we're doing. And you don't have to say, hey, I think they've got it all figured out. You say, this is really interesting, check it out. You know, like to know what your thoughts are. Hey, you know, I came across this, seems like good people trying to do good things, asked me to share. I think they're worth checking out. You know, you don't have to go up and say, I think this company is fantastic and perfect and they've got everything 100% dialed in and you better invest in them. You don't need to say those things. Uh, in fact, don't say those things. You know, that sounds very insincere. Those are uh, three ways that you can help us out. Again, you can pray, you can share, or you can pledge by going to eatinggrowsystems.com forward slash regcf. So I'll get to uh, all the other folks in future videos about uh, why you might want to invest in Eden, so stay tuned for those. But in the meantime, this is The Real Martian, out.